Last case before I show you now some data. Here you see a similar situation. This tooth had to be removed, and you see this is an extraction site and an implant here. And you see uh, also here for the second implant a rather low value, 44.55. Then you tell the patient, that's what I like with this technique, you see. I tell the patient, look, we have had a rather low value and we're going to measure in eight weeks, and if you are not getting to 70, we just wait another four weeks or two weeks in the study. Uh, because, and then, of course, you show them uh, this is the value, and uh, it looks like a technical uh, gadget. You see the patient, at least in Switzerland, they believe this. They say, yes, of course, we wait, huh, professor, and then we wait. Huh? Now, in this case, you see eight weeks, 53, 65. So we have improved, but not sufficiently. So patient waits. Easy. And in this case, actually, we did the measurement after two weeks later, so a 10-week follow-up, and now it's already 68. Healing excellent. And we gave another two weeks, now it's 71. And that is a case where it came up and then gradually increased, and then I gave the patient a green light, went back to the referring dentist, impression, final restoration. So these cases never get a provisional, so they, spend, they save that money, they go straight to final restoration. That's also the reason why I'm very careful, because I take the responsibility for that decision. If four weeks later the whole thing comes out, then of course I pay for the damage and not the restoring dentist. That's why I'm very careful with the